My new shop is making me billions of coins and this is how. So in this video I'm going to show you some of the most basic and simple strategies I use to make my shop as successful as it is today. Starting off with making things look cheaper. So what I mean by this is making the high demand items look cheaper or the items that don't sell as well. So for example my industrial smelter I used the tactic as setting it to 43 million with one coin off 44 million. So now this makes it look like it's 43 million instead of 44 million even though it's only one coin off. Now I use this for only high demand items so like industrial smelter, then you've got steel mill, then you've got red bronze refinery and then I've got all my mats here what I use it for like gearbox and then all the mats, buy vending machines so then it looks a lot cheaper. So this is basically just to make an item look cheaper than what it is and make your shop look cheaper overall. Now the next one is build an obby or build a mini game. So what I mean by this is that some people will just go ahead and play your obby for 10 to 20 minutes straight and just get you up on the leaderboard so then you don't have to go ahead and bot this server or whatever you want to do to get up to onto the top of the list. Basically meaning you're getting up onto the top of the list a lot easier. Now if an obby doesn't fancy you, you can go ahead and build a little mini game over here what is a fishing mini game. So I can go ahead and pull out a fishing rod from my inventory and then I can go ahead and stand here behind the line and try and get my fishing rod into one of the holes here. It's kind of a different thing and it's just going to change it up from just being an obby. Now the next one is to try and have all the high demand items or have a mixture of items. So now just don't have a shop on just selling weapons and industrial. Like you want to have it of everything. So I've got industrial weapons and limiteds and then my friends got miscellaneous items, seeds and openables and then my other friend has flowers and blocks. This means that we have a lot of items at our shop meaning that everyone will go ahead and come to our shop since they know we've got all those items instead of them going to another shop and spending their money there. Now it's basically just going to bring people more to your shop if you have every item that's why I'm saying to go ahead and do this. Now that one was a pretty simple one but the next one is even simpler to publish a lot even if AFK. So what I mean by this is even if you're published and only getting up to five people in your shop and not getting up to the top of the list you're getting your shop out there and well known and if if your shop is well known and everyone likes it, they'll come to your shop at the bottom and then they'll go ahead and visit. So the more you publish, the better. And you're not really losing anything from going ahead and publishing since it's just going to bring more players to your island and you're just going to make more money. Now the next one is to make sure to restock. Now my shop is pretty much restocked, but if we head over to my friends, he's sick at the moment and he hasn't restocked. Now this is going to affect the shop a little bit since no one can go ahead and really buy and sell any seeds, miscellaneous items, or openables. If we need to make sure to restock with, so then people will actually be able to sell it since, say for example, I want to go ahead and sell a pink gear. I'm going to go ahead and go over here and go, oh there's no money in there. And then I'm just going to go ahead and leave the shop and go to another random shop. But then if I had money in this vending, I would go ahead and sell my pink sticky gears, then maybe go wander around to see if I can sell some more items, therefore making more money. That's why it is important to have a fully stocked shop. Now one what I don't see a lot of people using is teleporter pads. And teleporter pads are really important since people are going to go ahead and find the item they want faster, then maybe go ahead and shop a little bit uh, like around your shop so you want to get them to the item as fast as possible because say for example I wanted to buy a like a seed and the seeds are all the way over in this corner right here instead of having no teleporter pad someone could walk over to this yellow area and then go oh there's no seeds over here then continue all the way through my shop reminder that they do not have the broom so this would take a lot longer and then go all the way through here and then be like oh there's no seeds here and leave around this point and then, then they're going to go to another shop when the seeds are right here, basically making you lose a sale. Now, make sure to have the teleporter pads as well at spawn, since that's going to help to get the player to your, that item. But yeah, as you can see, it's so much easier to go here and click seeds and find the seeds instead of wandering around the whole shop and then giving up before they actually reached it. And now, another one, what is really important, is to place ATMs. Now, I barely see 
see any shops placing these, like, especially new shops, but to have one around every single corner is so necessary, since, say for example, some guy joined your shop with zero coins and they had it all in their ATM, they are going to have to go back to their island, place an ATM, withdraw the money, and then by the time they have withdrawn that money, they're not going to go back to your shop, because they know your shop doesn't have ATMs, so they're just going to go to a completely different shop. Now, you can even place a steel one, you don't have to place as many as I did, but you could just place one at least every corner, so one here, then maybe one over there, you don't have to place two, but then you have one over here, even placing them in the floor like this looks flush and like looks nice, you could probably just place one right there, right here, and then run right there and the other side, you could only place like five in this little area. So, you're basically getting more money by having these ATMs placed down, so it is a necessary. Now the next one what you can do is join Discord servers, so you can join my Discord server, DV's Discord server, and the island's Discord server, all linked in the description. Now what I like to go ahead and do is post something on the lines of that, so it looks eye-catchy, it's not too overcomplicated. it's TH co-op shop, 500 plus vendings, we buy and sell, code is then the code. If you want to go ahead and join the two main ones, it would be mine and the islands one, so go ahead and join them if you want to. And the next one is to make sure to have an eye-catching published islands title. Now I see a fair bit of people having no title, like they only have they're like no emojis or anything. It is a necessity to have emojis. It catches the attention of people going ahead and looking through this list. As you can see, mine is TH Co-op Shop and it just catches the attention. Having emojis is one of the most important things. And also a thing I have noticed is we've changed our name from TH Mega Co-op and to TH Co-op Shop and we have got so many more people into our shop ever since we did that. So what I suggest you guys do is have market, shop, or mall in your title. Since it goes ahead and attracts a lot more people because they think it's a shop, not like a random island. For some odd reason it helps, I don't know why, I think it's so people know it's an actual shop, but just go ahead and use any of that in there in your title and it will go ahead and help and get you up on the list more. Now another one is not really to help your shop, but it is going to save you a lot of time. It is to use vending shortcuts. So a vending shortcut is like, say for example, I can click on my keyboard to go ahead and open that vending. And now if I want to go ahead and close it, I can use E, C, or B on my keyboard to go ahead and close this vending machine menu. Now this works for any menu, by the way, if you want to go ahead and know that. Like, I don't know why C and B work and E. It is so helpful to go ahead and use O to open Open the vending machine, then E to quickly close it. Uh, I don't really use O since it's a lot faster to drag my mouse up there, but E is very helpful. Now another one is, say for example, uh, I want to go ahead and change this ruby staff to 295 mil. I can go ahead and put it with a capital M and it will change the price to 295. And now I don't want it at 295, I want it at 1 billion. I can use 1 and then capital B. Make sure it is a capital by the way for the M and the B. And then now oh I went too high in the price I want to go to 100k you have to do a lowercase k by the way but then I can go ahead and set it to 100k but yeah that is basically how you use those shortcuts to set prices they are very helpful some people think they don't exist but then there is this other one what I have noticed and it is very weird I want to go ahead and withdraw 1.5 billion I can do 0.0001n and it will go ahead and withdraw 1.5 billion. It is so weird. If you go ahead and use any number with an n at the end, it will withdraw the max amount you can hold. And then another thing that you can do is I've got over 1 billion in my inventory and I can go ahead and do the exact same to put into a vending. So that is just like, it's just a, not very useful, but it is interesting to know. Now that is really everything I have to tell you guys. So go ahead and click on this video right up here. If you want to go ahead and see different types of Roblox Islands players, it's, it's actually, actually pretty, pretty funny, funny the, video, the video. So, so please, please click, click it. it. Now, now bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye.